Festas e Eventos TV Interview é um oferecimento de Mirabela, locação de vestidos de noivas Meg Sotero. Conheça também a coleção de vestidos para festas. 3026-4988. Olá, você está no interview do Festas Eventos TV e hoje eu tenho o prazer de entrevistar Jim Cunningham, que é referência mundial no tema excelência na prestação de serviços. Mas para a gente começar nosso bate-papo, eu gostaria de saber quem é Jim. Interesting question. I've 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 spent now nearly my whole life trying to figure that out myself. Okay. But here goes. <laughs> I'm closer. <laughs> I'm a little closer to finding out, but I think Jim Cunningham is somebody that cares a great deal about what he does. Uh, and, and, and my perspective of me is a helper, wherever I can, wherever that happens. I've chosen what I do because I think we all work our legacy. And when it's all done, people will say, well, Jim Cunningham did this. O que que você vê que as outras pessoas não enxergam, que você é obrigado a dar palestra para poder ensinar, para que as pessoas tenham essa percepção. I see not what they can't see, but what they choose not to see. And in many, many cases that's the obvious. Essas escolhas são inconscientes? Well, well, I think so. I think when people from leadership down attempt to do something, they have a vision of what that something is. And I like to say vision without action is hallucination. Quando você descobriu que você tinha essa facilidade de ver as coisas que as pessoas não querem ver. I think all along that happens. I, I think if you become sensitive to people around you. And I think if you can figure out when people are the most happy. Right? And we make the mistake sometimes of tying that to money, and it's there is no tie to money for happiness. It might help, but it's it's not the tie that binds. I think Confucius said it best when he said, "Find a job you love to do, and you will never work another day in your life." So I think if you're running a business, one of the secrets, one of the key secrets, is to try to find people who want to work for you. Not people that want a job. They want to work for you. And that happens when you build a culture that includes things like honesty, ethics, compassion. Right? When that's what the company is based on. I'm not getting liturgical here. I'm not getting church. I'm just saying basically build a culture that cares about people. Liderar? Because the leader sets the culture. And culture is simply the way a company does their business. There is no greater explanation for culture than this is how we do our business. Right? Now, the proof that people want to work for certain cultures, if you look at successful companies, let's take two. Harley Davidson and Walt Disney. Two totally different cultures. Couldn't be any further apart. You couldn't get somebody that works at Harley Davidson to go to work for Disney. Nor could you get somebody that works for Disney to go to Harley Davidson. The fit would be too uncomfortable. The culture is different. And yet they're both very successful. Sim, e você teria que construir essa cultura, fazer essa cultura, passo a passo, dia a dia, ou você pode pegar pessoas aculturadas e aproveitar já um desempenho melhor. First of all, every com company has the culture. Maybe different, but they have. That culture was started when the business was started. There is nothing as constant as change. So the culture is always changing, right? The basic tenets 
may always be the same, but the culture changes. If you get bigger, you need to do things differently. The market increases or the market diminishes. You need to do things differently. And again, the, the definition of culture is the way a company does their business. Right? So you constantly look for people who can buy into the culture. To that end, Walt Disney said, if we ever stop growing, we die. He wasn't talking about building more theme parks. He was talking about intellectual growth, right? But when you grow intellectually, you change the culture. So people that may have been with you for a while are now going to be uncomfortable because it's a different company. So that's why that change is happening all the time. Pelo que nós estamos conversando, uh, pessoas são importantes e culturas implementadas nessas pessoas que fazem o sucesso de uma empresa. E como ter a cultura do all? If I tell you it's easy, it, then that sounds a little silly. But it is easy. It's about paying attention to detail. Paying attention to detail. We get complacent with, even in our own lives, we get complacent. I've always done it. We can do it. In my sleep, I can do it, right? That's complacency. That's the beginning of the end, right? It's always paying attention to detail. I tell a story in my book about my father, who, uh, who delivered bakery goods uh, in a truck, house to house. And uh, the company that he was with grew very quickly. And they changed his route. And they took half of his route away. And when they took half the route away, their sales dropped. Okay? And they couldn't figure out why the sales had dropped. It wasn't about selling bread. It was about relationships that he had built with all of the customers on his route. He was compassionate. He could listen to them. It wasn't about how fresh is the bread or how sweet is the pie. It was about somebody who would take the time to listen. That simple. To my way of thinking, okay, I, th I tell people in business, it's not what the customer thinks about you when they come in. It's what they believe about you when they leave. É isso é um grande problema. Yeah, it is. But it's a perception. Perception. Here's the thing: facts are negotiable. Perceptions are not. Can argue fact all day long, and we will both leave here very uncomfortable because your perception is your reality. My perception is my reality. Right? So if a company is to be successful. They have to understand perception. If they're not successful, it's probably a bad perception on the part of the guests. You're doing something that's upsetting to the guests somewhere. So you have to change their perception. You can argue the fact all day long. No, we're the best. We, we know we're the best. We have the best. No good. It's a weak argument. My perception already tells me what the reality is. É inegociável. Não estou vendo os detalhes. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. I tell a story in the seminar about this. I've over, I have two million miles flying with Delta Airline. Two million miles. That's a lot of time in airplanes. Right? If I live in Orlando and I'm going to use Delta Airlines, I have to go to Atlanta, Georgia. They'll fly Orlando to Atlanta because that's their hub. And then you can go anywhere in the world from Atlanta. They posted the flight time as 57 minutes, Orlando to Atlanta. Every time I took the flight, I was five to 10 minutes late in Atlanta. And I started writing letters. What a poor company you have. I've got two million miles. You can't deliver on your promise. Two months later, they come out with a new schedule. The flight time now from Orlando to Atlanta was 73 minutes. Same flight. I look at a map. Is it, have they stretched the distance out, right? No. The marketing vice president called me and said, Mr. Cunningham, we can't do anything about crews that are late, about weather, about equipment failure. What they did was they worked on my perception. 59 minutes couldn't deliver on the promise. 
73 minutes, can deliver on the promise, and I'm early every time I take that flight, and I love Delta Airlines. Same flight. Facts are negotiable, perceptions are not. My perception is now I'm early before I was late. Mesmo estando atrasado. Now I'm early, and I love them. Percepção. Jim, vamos para um pequeno intervalo e voltamos logo em seguida.